Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another edition here of Intuitive Angling. Really appreciate you guys taking some time to watch the video today. And you know, one of the things I like to do on the channel here is I sort of like to relate stories to you guys about things that I've sort of been through or experienced over my, all my years in fishing. And, and a lot of those experiences I had are things that helped me catch more bass and become a better angler. And they come from some of the most surprising places. You don't really know a lot of, you don't really expect a lot of times to learn things off of certain people that really help your fishing. But I want to tell you guys a story today about uh, this 90 year old crappie fisherman that basically helped me become a lot better bass fisherman, a lot better fisherman, even though he didn't even bass fish. Um, they're down at Grand Lake there in Oklahoma. My, my mom and dad had a, a trailer house on the lake for like 30 years down there. And uh, in the little park where they had the trailer house, there was a heated crappie dock in the cove down there. And every winter, you know, there's, it was one of those old time heated crappie docks where there was a bunch of chairs around the cutout area inside the heated dock. And he, there was a bunch of old timers in there. And my dad would go down there and I'd go down with him and we'd crappie fish in the winter time. So anyway, one of the guys there that it was a regular is this old dude named Lawrence. And Lawrence was 90 years old. Now this was back in uh, the 19, or the early to mid 1970s. So you can imagine, you know, he's an old dude. You know, he'd been, you know, super old by now. But uh, anyway, Lawrence was a super old dude, and he was down there every single day crappie fishing. And you got to remember, in these heated docks, it's it's a cutout in the floor that's about, you know, 10 by 10, that type of a deal. And there's guys standing around and sitting down there crappie fishing off this thing. And Lawrence would always, he would always catch more crappie than anyone else in the dock. It didn't matter where he was in the dock. It's not like he had one spot, but he would just <coughs> always catch more crappie than anyone else. And I got studying Lawrence. I got, I got watching him, you know, and trying to figure out why Lawrence caught so many more crappie than he did and started talking to him. And what Lawrence was doing with his crappie jig, old Marabou crappie jig, is, you know, he'd, he'd, we'd have, there was brush down in the water, like 10 foot down. And Lawrence would like, you know, drop his crappie jig vertical down there. And he'd just sort of twitch it around a little bit and move it in one spot. And then he'd reel it in and he'd move his rod tip maybe two inches to one direction, like two inches to the left. And he'd drop it down again and he'd start jigging it around a little bit. If he didn't get one, he'd reel it back in and maybe move it forward about two inches. This is a bad thing. What happened? Elliot, Elliot think I'm done. Elliot think I'm not done with my watermelon by a.m. Okay, I'm about done with my video. I'll come over and take care of it. Okay, see, so they've been eating some watermelon out in the yard here and got in an argument there. So anyway, Lawrence would would keep dabbing his little crappie jig just like two inches apart. Yeah. And he would always wind up catching more crappie than anyone else. And I got studying Lawrence and I started thinking about it a little bit after years went by about how he did that. And I started doing the same thing when I was flipping. It's like when I was flipping bushes or trees or lay downs or whatever like that, um, I would flip in there. And it's like if I didn't get a bite, I wouldn't reel it up and pitch four or five feet up in front of me. I would reel it up and I'd pitch like four or five inches away from where I was before and I would dissect this piece of cover just like Lawrence would with the crappie jig and it it worked like crazy. It's like I caught so many more fish by working pieces of cover super slow and super methodically, you know, after figuring out how Lawrence was catching those crappie. And that's one thing that you need to remember, guys, is when you're fishing cover, it doesn't matter what type of cover it is, but any type of a cover that's fairly thick, it could be grass, it could be lay downs, it could be bushes or whatever like that, is a lot of times these fish that are in this cover, they are positioned in different areas or they're positioned in different ways. Like, you know, you may have a, a bass position like this way in a tree and another one's position like that way and you don't really know how they're positioned because you don't know how the limbs are underneath the water. But the reason why Lawrence's technique was so effective and why I started catching fish flipping doing that is that a lot of times in order to trigger a strike from a bass in a piece of cover, you have to get, you have to get right next to that fish to generate the impulse strike from that fish. 
a lot of times these fish in heavy cover, they're not gonna turn around and chase something in that heavy cover that's away from them. But if something drops right in front of their nose, they're gonna reach out and grab it out of instinct and out of reaction. So that little piece of, you know, knowledge that I learned from just watching him wax everybody in the heated dock has caught me thousands of bass over the years. So that's one of the things that, just a quick video today, I wanted to remind you guys, when you're pitching and flipping or casting around heavy cover, take your time to dissect thoroughly every square inch of that because most of the time you're leaving fish in there. If you, if you could, you will never do better fishing faster than slower. You will always catch more fish fishing slower. And this is especially true if you're getting a few bites. Like if you're, if you're fishing some whatever type of cover and you're getting bit occasionally, I can promise you that you're, you're gonna be fishing over fish if you don't slow down with that. So give it a try. Just next time you're pitching and flipping, make your little presentation just inches away from itself instead of feet and see how many more bites you get. So thanks for tuning in guys. We'll talk later.